Hi, DB Sims. Okay, do I have a short screen uh, green organic love or is it a wide screen? I mean, because it is acting crazy today. Back again, it, 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 it is sideways again. Long screen. And I don't know how to unlock it. I am so upset, guys. Mm. Love your singing voice. Thank you, but I, I'm having problems today. I'm just going to have to go like this. Green Organic Love, what do you think? Do you think I should just go ahead and hold this phone and just do it like this? Go back to the long screen. I can't do it. It's fine like this. Fine looks good to me. Because basically, all I'm going to be doing is answering questions. Now, you are right side up. Sing your problems away. I wish I could. Daughter, can I just leave it like this? Is it okay? You're okay. Okay, basically, basically, I'm sorry. You are vertical long screen. I can't help it. Did you get a chance to look at my fig tree yet? Did you send me a picture, Miss MB? Because if you did, I don't have it yet. We can see you. It's a good, it's good, lady. Okay, guys, I'm going with it just like this for today. Um, this is an iPhone 10s. It, it's something wrong with my phone, and I ordered another one, and it should be here tomorrow. So the next time I go live, maybe I won't have this problem. I apologize. So... Today is on, your screen is fine now, Miss Cheryl. Thank you, Grain, uh, Game Nerd Mom. Picture is okay. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with you guys. Um, it's just question and answer tonight. So if you want to just type in all caps your question and i'm gonna try not to be on here long and since i'm not going to be concentrating on sharing other stuff with you i can concentrate on the questions the first one is from db i'm trying to find her question my tomatoes have stopped blooming they have a lot of growing tomatoes on them why no blooms db I hope I'm saying your name right. If it's Debbie or DB, once the temperatures get 85 to 90 degrees, new blooms will not appear. It is too hot. So what you got to do is just concentrate on all of the tomatoes that you got. When I flip this screen around, I showed you guys some tomatoes on my table. I harvested all my tomatoes a couple of weeks, about a week ago. For the simple reason, it's too hot down here in Garden Zone 8A, North Texas. So, yeah, I have a lot of tomatoes, and I got people coming to get some of these tomatoes. Because this is from the emergency garden. Thank you. So, yes, um, once it gets too hot, you will not get any more blooms. You will only get the opportunity to keep growing the tomatoes that you currently have on the plant. Okay. Okay, very good. I hope I answered your question. Now you can shade your plants and lower the temperature 
If they're in a container, you can move them to some shelter, like on a patio or up under an umbrella or something like that. But you would not get any blooms once those temperatures get over 85. Okay? Next question. Hello? You're welcome, Debbie. Debbie, is it DB or Debbie? <laughs> Hello, hypocentric. Okay, guys, I'm just trying to pull up the questions on my laptop. Question. Some people space their plants out and others plant multiple types really close together. Is there a rule? Okay, your, your uh, question zoomed out. You want to keep uh, plants that produce a whole lot at least one square foot away. So like 12 inches. If you're doing something like corn, nine inches away, eight inches uh, I have brown leaves on my corn. Should I feed it more? Corn takes a lot of nitrogen. So, yes, uh, I would give it a little bit more nitrogen. Okay, I'm not picking up this live at all. Did I plant my kale lettuce too late? Is that what? Are you in grown? You in A? Yeah. Lettuce will start to bolt in zone A around this time. However, kale, if you if you um, shade it, you can probably get a little bit more life out of it. Okay? I planted ginger and turmeric a month ago. Nothing has come up. Should I keep watering it? Ho hold back on the watering. You might, it might, you might wanna dig it up and look and see if it's turned to mush. A month is plenty of time for the roots and ginger and turmeric to start sprouting. Uh, yeah, you might want to just scoop around there, feel it around, and see if uh, if you've given it too much water, it won't root, it will turn to mush. How do you keep rabbits from eating your corn ears? Oh, man, now he's saying I don't have no modem in my... Um, on my laptop. Wow. So, um, rabbits, you could put that rodent be gone or that rodent repellent that I shared in the last live video, or you can look at my, um, playlist for insects and rodents and it'll give you the product. You get it at Home Depot, it comes in a spray or a granular, and it's okay to use um, around your pets because it won't uh, hurt them. It just makes their nose tingle, the, the mucus in their nose, and uh, they'll stay away from it. Okay, all caps. I'm in AA. Can you grow lettuce? Unless it's outside, don't try to grow lettuce. I mean, inside, don't try to grow lettuce outside. It's too hot. Now, there are some heat tolerant lettuce. You can Google that and maybe, you know, you'll find one. But I don't have good luck with lettuce once it gets past 90 degrees. It's 100 degrees here. Hi, Wanda B. Thank you for stopping. How do I stop bugs from eating? Okay, let me see if I can find yours. Okay, I'm going to mute that. Okay, now my laptop is back. How do I stop bugs from eating? My veggies is so good for this purpose. Catherine's Garden? No. You're in a cooler climate, though, Catherine's Garden. You have that cottage-like garden. If you are under 80 degrees, you can spray with neem oil, pure cold-pressed neem oil and water, 
and you can put a drop of dish soap in it. But if you're in a climate like where I am, zone eight and up, I would not recommend putting any soap. Okay? Neem oil and water or a little Dawn if you're in a, in a cooler climate. If you're in a warmer climate, no soap or no oil on your leaves because it will burn them. Okay, let me move on to the next one. Thank you, Green Organic Love. Thank you, daughter. She's she's going to post that playlist for pests and insects. Somebody put a gate around their plants to keep the rabbits out. Pretty good, uh, Ebony. If you're able to do that, that's wonderful. Okay, you've been blasting, gardening with joy, blasting bugs with the water hole. Seems to be working. Yes, if it's aphids, that'll work. If it's something like uh, slugs, they'll still come back because they're attracted to water. If it's something like stink bugs, they will come back. The only blasting of water to get rid of insects, to my knowledge, is aphids. It's been a month and a half when I transplanted my kale and the leaves turned brown. Did I do something wrong? If the leaves turn brown, it's not getting enough water. Okay, my squash leaves are turning yellow, too much water. Faith, I would recommend that you use um, a liquid fertilizer like fish emulsion by Neptunes with seaweed. Do not, I repeat, do not just use plain fish emulsion on a blooming plant. You need something that has phosphorus in it to let your squash plants bloom. Somebody, Miss uh, Robinson uses DE. Yes, DE, diatomaceous earth will work, providing that it, you, it doesn't get rained on or you don't wet it when you're watering your plants. Once DE gets wet, it is inactive. But DE is also very good. I recommend, because I use it, I recommend that you put it on in the evening and then rinse it off in the morning because DE has been proven to kill bees. So you don't want to put anything that's going to harm bees because we need them to pollinate our fruit and veggies. Okay, let's see what we got next. Yeah, those stink bugs are horrible. Let me tell you what I use for the stink bug. That is my bug juice. Daughter, if you put the link again to the pesticides, and I just made the bug juice. It has onion, garlic, and red pepper. They don't like the taste of it or the smell of it. Because I walked out one morning. In fact, it was Saturday morning, and it was four stink bugs sucking the light out of one of my fig trees. It was all over the leaves. And I ran back in the house and I got my uh, bug spray. You should see them flying. And I just kept going back out there all morning, back and forth as I was working. They were nowhere in sight. They do not like the smell of garlic, onions, and red pepper. And that's why they were on the fig trees because uh, fig tree because I hadn't sprayed it. They don't bother my garden beds where I have companion planted Mary goes, society garlic, and then I took all of the remnants of the stink bug ingredients, the onion, garlic, and red pepper, and I squeezed it all out in an organza bag, mesh bag, and then I took all those remnants and I sprinkled it all around my garden beds. So I'm not having any problems in my garden beds. It's the freestanding trees and bushes, things like that, that's being attacked. D is bad. D E is bad for bees. Yes, Living Miracle Homestead. I agree with you. Okay. I have a white powdery looking leaf on my squash leaves. Should I cut them off? Um, there's a product I recommend. It's called Serenade. It takes care of all funguses and it's organic. If you don't have that or the ability to get that, you can use bacon soda and water it would lower the acidic 
uh, number and it will clear up the powdery mildew. And you also can use milk and water. Google it because I don't have time to go into the, the measurements because I don't measure. Okay. But you want to put a small amount into your milk or your water and, and that'll help. In the meantime, you can trim off the leaves because it won't hurt your plant. What is the best fertilizer for tomatoes? Okay, I love it. And I know you're going to not get like me for this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. It's compost, homemade compost, garden lime, Neptune's fish fertilizer with seaweed. Main thing I use is compost. Okay, Miss Cheryl, are, there are flowers that should not be planted near food or plants. Thank you. None that I'm aware of. The only flowers that I know of, of course, you know, there are some toxic things like um, uh, moon flowers. You shouldn't plant that around pets. But I don't know of any flower that you couldn't have around your food. How do I prepare the ground to plant seeds? Okay, you're talking about the soil, wherever you live. It just depends on what type of soil that you have. You always want to, if you're talking about your natural in-ground soil, you always want to amend it with some type of homemade compost or bulk compost. Uh, if you have like clay soil, soils that don't drain well, I would mix it with garden soil that you purchase. Also, uh, perlite or cocoa core, you need to amend it so that it'll drain and it won't just be so hard and tight. Okay. Hello, love notes. Okay, I'm going to go back to see what I missed. White powdery mildew. Month and a half since you planted the kale. Shaded. I answered gar uh, Catherine's Gardens question. Can celery survive in the heat? Miss Sims, D. Sims. No. Unless you live in zone six and lower, I don't recommend you uh, growing celery in the heat. I'm in gr uh, zone 8A. And I cannot grow celery in the heat. It's just not a it's not a, a hot weather crop. How do you keep anything from eating your corn? <laughs> Guarded. I'm sorry. I'm just laughing because a, a funny thought ran across across my mind. Um, spray your garlic spray on it, baby. But the corn is going to get attacked. It's just too tempting. Spray that bug spray that I told you about. Okay, I'm going all the way to the front. Top of this. Okay, now I'm going to catch up with the... I got all of that. I think I'm, I caught up. If I missed your question, just put it in all caps again. Team Benny Wells. All of those together, I assume you're talking about the onion. The garlic and the red pepper flakes, yes, all together. I have a video, and I let it steep for a whole week. Put the top on it. It won't seep out if you put it in the heavy top. And then I brought it to a boil, and I put the flakes in. I let the, the onion and the garlic steep. And it really doesn't smell that bad. It just smells like onion and garlic, you know. Okay, great. Squash vine border solution. No, let me go back. Do you think it is better to buy bare root fruit trees or to get cuttings? Black Betty Boop, I love your name. It just depends on how old you are and do you have patience? Because most cuttings from fruit trees, unless it's an established tree, it'll take a little while to get, uh, you know, big and uh, produce fruit. I wouldn't order a little cutting of a fruit tree from eBay or Amazon or any place like that. I would get it from somebody that you know. For example, Lead Farmer 73 does air layering of his uh, fruit trees and then they go on to produce fruit relatively soon. 
if you want a tree, um, like an apple tree, a pear tree, a peach tree, I would buy a bare root tree. And I highly, I highly recommend Stark Brothers or Isom's Nursery. Both of these are online and they have a lot of information on their site that tells you for your gardening zone, when is the best time to plant their trees? Both companies, Isom's Nursery and Stark Brothers. Now let's move to Pamela Lopez. I'm, mm -mm, no, if the truck stops rolling, squash vine border solution, there is no solution. You can make or take preventative measures. I took some squash and I took the uh, the stem that connects from this to the, where the seedling emerged, and I wrapped it in aluminum foil. I sprayed my bug repellent spray on them almost every other day. But if you notice, even when your seedling, your squash seedling is very small, it smells like squash. Cucumbers smell, seedling smells like cucumbers. The squash vine border is going to find it. Also, if you've had a problem previously, they lay eggs in the soil that would just stay there during the winter. And then when the conditions are favorable, when the temperatures are warm, the, the eggs will hatch and you'll have the same issue. So my suggestion is to read up, go to farmersalmanac.com, put in your garden zone, put in the search engine, what you're trying to grow, and they'll give you some optimal dates that you should be sowing seeds or planting transplants uh to avoid the squash vine border as much as you can for example i'm in zone 8a in my zone researchers claim that squash vine borders uh are not real prevalent in after the month of june so if i can get through this month I'm supposed to be okay, but but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Even with all of my preventative measures and even with me being retired and watching my garden very carefully, I still get some squash vine borders. Now, there's a product that is called BT. I can't pronounce the technical term, but just write this down, BT. And it's supposed to kill it. And some people take a syringe and inject the stems of their squash plants and do a preliminary strike. I don't do it, but that is an alternative. The If the truck stopped rolling, somebody asked me a question. No, Pamela Lopez, I made your bug spray. How long does it last? Forever. Keep it sealed. I have some on top of my washing machine, and every time I go through there, I can smell it. I need to take it and move it and put it inside my grow room. So there's no expiration date on that. The longer you have it, the stronger it's going to get, Pamela. So you'll be fine. Okay, Miss Love Notes. Cheryl's Organic Food Forest, when you freeze your whole tomatoes, do you take off the green stems at the top? I most certainly do. And Love Notes... I have learned that I don't even have to peel my tomatoes. You know, some people blanch them and take them out real quick and then peel them off. That peeling is very uh, good for pasta sauce. I just take them out and put them in the refrigerator or in the sink. And I pop them in the blender. And I emulsify them and then I cook them with my peppers, my vinegar, you know, whatever I'm going to use. Mushrooms. It just depends on which kind of pasta sauce I'm going to make it. Because make. those peels kind of help thicken it up some, too, like tomato paste. 
And by the way, I'm glad you brought that up, Love Notes, because I got an email from somebody who wanted to know if I freeze my tomatoes, will they become mushy? Yes, when you thaw them out, they will. I didn't mean to imply that you can freeze your tomatoes and then slice them up and put them in a salad. I only freeze the tomatoes that I'm going to make. Stewed tomatoes, pasta sauce, uh, tomato juice, that type of thing. Okay? Okay. Always take your green stems off. Yes, you make sauce out of them. Very good. Hi, whole new perspective. We're glad you're here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm have my hand on my laptop. I have my hand on the screen. I'm gonna make sure I'm getting everybody's question. Hey, Bear Fruit Gardening. Good to see you. If I missed your question, I need you to go ahead and do me a favor and type it in now. What should I do to get rid of excess striders? I don't know what striders. Are you talking about spiders? Hello, Angela Bowden. If you're talking about spiders, honey, don't do anything. Unless they're getting in your way, of your path for you to garden. The more spiders you have, the better because they eat insects. They eat the small insects. And then you have frogs and lizards eat the bigger insects. So it's like an ecosystem. I would not do anything to get rid of spiders unless it's in a plant that I'm bringing in the house uh, for the winter. What's the downside to getting a 16 quart pressure canner compared to a 23 quart? There's no downsize. It's just that you can't can as much at, at one time. There's no downsize. Get what you can get at this time because you may end up getting another one later, you know? So get what, what is uh, feasible for you to do at this time. Okay, is there another question? Did I forget? Did I skip over a question? And what are striders? Okay, until there's a question, I want to uh, bring something to your attention. Should I trim my onion tops? They don't seem to be swelling below the ground. No, that's not going to make it swell at the ground if you cut your garlic top. I mean, your uh, your onion tops. What you need to do is, mm, let's say this is your onion, and this is the soil around it. Push the soil around your onion bulb to expose it more. It'll grow bigger. Took me a long time to figure that out. Okay? Don't cut your tops off. Push the soil down all the way around it. They will grow bigger bulbs. Okay. I only seem to see the 16 quart canners online. Then I would go ahead and get that because this pandemic has uh, made a lot of people think twice about their food supply and they are starting more gardens and they're becoming more self-sufficient and they are, uh, preserving food more. So uh, I think it was last week or the week before I made a post about uh, where you could get canners from and what was available at that time because I had gotten so many emails, but I haven't received any emails lately, so I haven't been looking for them. Okay. 
Yes, Miss Love Notes, I said that. You want to push the store away from the bulb. Okay. I love your title screens. What video editing software do you use? I use Movie Maker right in my iPhone. Very good. If I may ask, what started you gardening? That is uh, that Lady Dre. I started gardening. Hello, Quietly Gardening. Thank you for coming. I started uh, helping my grandparents when I was a child. I've always been fascinated with nature. I've probably said this almost on every live that my best vacations, and I've been to some nice exotic places, but my best vacations have been camping. I love nature. So my grandparents started my love for gardening. And uh, as I got older, I went through a health crisis with cancer and I wanted to kind of take control over the foods that I ate. And so I started gardening more. Also, my late husband was from Mississippi. He grew up on a 48-acre farm. So he knew a whole lot about gardening. And, uh, and once you start gardening, guys, once you get these, every... Because I, I, I grow tomatoes all year long. Now, I stop the 1st of June until about September and then I start growing them again for the fall and the winter in my greenhouse. But once you taste a good homegrown tomato that is not filled with pesticides and insecticides, you just can't eat that other stuff. Thank you, Gardening with Joy. You just can't eat it. It doesn't taste the same. And once you take a tiny seed and you see it just grow into a beautiful plant, and give you 30, 40 tomatoes. I don't know, guys. It's just, it's a miracle. I just love it. Nothing better than a homegrown tomato. Into the Blues 222. You are so right. Somebody said they finally bought their jars yesterday and will try canning chicken this weekend. Angela, if you need me, I'm here for you. Oh, no, I won't be here for you. I'm going, I'm going camping with my sons. I'm sorry. You can send you can send me a, a email and I'll try to help you, but I you know I'm setting up that Zoom where I'm gonna be zooming into your homes and holding your hand. But we have to have like a date for that. And by the way, I will not be having a uh, live Monday because we're going out in the woods of Tennessee from Texas, and we're gonna be camping out with our camp uh, tents and you know. Beds, everything, okay? So I hope to get some good pictures and bring them back and show you guys. What recipe do you use your golden beets in? I bought some from the farmer's market this weekend and not sure what to do with them. I'm not sure if I have a, a, a video on making the beets. You can check my canning recipe. Um... If it's not one in there, email me, Team Bennett, and I will send you one. It's very simple. Okay. Catherine, my apple trees have not flowered. When will they begin to flower and fruit? Depend on where you are. But by now, you should have gotten some flowers. You in a zone about six? Check with the Farmer's Almanac for your zone, Catherine. I've got apples, but I've been having apples since February. But I'm in a warmer zone, and last winter, we had a very, very mild uh, winter. You can buy pressure canners at Pressure Cooker Outlet, and there's a telephone number. Why, thank you, Belinda. We appreciate you. Everybody, you need to write that down. Pressure cooker outlet. Very good. Thank you again. Angela, canning chicken is the easiest thing, in my opinion, to can. 
I have one of those big, um, uh oh, sorry about that. I have one of those big, um, butcher, um, uh, you know, those little wide knives, and I take the tape of uh, the, uh, the legs, the, you know, that part, that little skinny part, and I chop those off about an inch from the bottom so that it can, the, the chicken legs can fit in the jar real well. And you don't even have to cook your chicken. You just load that chicken in there. You can't add chicken broth. You can add gar garlic. You can add onion. Hello, Carmen. And you just pack it raw. Some people pack it without any broth. Some pack, people pack it with broth. I like to add some for extra flavoring. And, uh, and then you press your can it. It's easy. Very easy. Somebody said they cook theirs in the crock pot and added broth. I do that too. And I, sometimes I make soup out of that, that chicken. Uh, when I did my introduction to uh, canning that first night, I think it was my first live, I lined up my table with all types of food that I have canned. And I showed you chicken with bones in it that I pressure can raw. And then I showed you broth, bone broth that I cook for 24 hours because it has all of the... See, a lot of people don't realize the bones, the marrow in the bones is what, is what give it the flavoring. So if you cook that, even your turkey carcass after you've had Thanksgiving or Christmas, boil that and simmer it for 24 hours. It is so nutritious and very healing. When I get sick, I eat me some bone broth and all I drink me some bone broth. And all I have to do is go to my grow room slash pantry and it's right there on the shelf. So that first live that I was saying to you guys, I had all these products and I shared with you. And so I shared shredded chicken that I cooked and simmered in the stove. I shared shredded chicken that I cooked in the crock pot on top of the stove, all kind of methods. So I have a lot of different ways that I have chicken stored in my um, jars. So whatever I want to make, whether it's chicken tetrazzini or chicken soup, or if I want to make chicken and gravy, which I don't eat gravy, but you, you got the idea. Okay. Debbie, you said that you cook yours in the crock pot. Very good. Can you only can chicken legs? Yes, team Bennett. I put a chicken leg and a thigh, in, two legs and a thigh in each of those small jars because it's just me now. All my children are grown. They, they have their own families. So I just uh, can in, you know, mostly in smaller jars. And you can only hold about three pieces. Okay, yes. Uh, Sheila Fade. Yes, I sold fertilizer. I guess that's a private conversation because I don't understand that. It's, if it's not all caps, during the winter, I keep a crock pot on low overnight to simmer the bones for bone broth to drink in the morning. I keep adding water all week with the same bones. Yes, ma'am, you can do that. Very good, Cassandra. Okay. What are you fertilizing with? Did I miss a question? Let me go back and see if I missed something. I grew spearmint from seed for the first time, but they smelled like weeds. Any reason why this may have happened? My dusty garden, I have no idea. But next time you have a question, put it in all caps. I have no idea why, why spearmint seeds would turn like, smell like weeds. I've grown spearmint and it doesn't smell like that. It smells like juicy fruit gum to me. I don't know if you all remember that gum. Debbie says she can shredded chicken. Sheila says her fruit trees are doing very well. Good to hear it. Yes, uh, Camille Peters, I have several um, videos on how I can chicken with the bones and without, raw and cooked. So you have um, a lot to choose from. Hello, Tommy 
bites Carolina Homestead. Yes, I use the wide mouth jars, Angela Bowden, for the chicken. You can load them up better. I look for, I don't know what that is. Okay. Hello, I am new. I love your videos. I am trying to learn how to grow my own food and preserve it. Sorry for being late. No problem, Betty Jackson. We are so happy that you're here. Just keep watching the videos. Whenever you have a question, just leave it. If it's pertaining to a specific video of mine that you watched, just leave it in the comments. If it's not pertaining to that particular video, you can shoot me an email. Okay, here we go. I got two bare fruit, bare root uh, cherry trees. They both bloom and grew leaves. Now the leaves have died on one, and it's been a few weeks. New look. It only has a few leaves. I'm over watering. They are in containers. Okay. Yes, you want to make sure that you do not over water cherry trees and peach trees. I say this all the time. I've killed enough of them, I know. They do not like wet feet. So when I ordered from reliable companies and I took trees and I put them in the ground, bare root, and I watered the hell out of them, I gave them too much water and they died. So now I have four cherry trees in containers and all of my stone fruit, my peach tree, no, I shouldn't say stone fruit because plums are stone fruit. My pe two peach and my nectarine tree are in a raised bed. This is their second year. Next year would be three years. I put them in a raised bed so that I can control the water. And somebody just sent me um, money through my cash app, Lydia Best. I thank you very much. So if you want to contribute to my uh, cause of my emergency garden or to help me buy supplies to keep things going because I'm on a fixed income, I just got monetized from YouTube, but I don't, I haven't received any money. So if you want to contribute to my cause, I would certainly appreciate it. And if you don't contribute to my cause, I still will answer your emails. I'm going to tell you why. Hold your thoughts, hold your questions. I stopped at Barefoot Fruit Cherry Trees. Uh, let me answer that question and I'll tell you my story. They grew leaves and then they died and now it has a few leaves. Am I overwatering? Yeah, you probably overwatered them. You want to hold back and let your soil get bone dry and then give them some water in about once a week. They cannot take cherry trees and peach trees, cannot take wet feet. If they have too much water, they will die, okay? But the good thing about cherry trees and peach trees, if you hold the water for a week, let them get bone dry, then water them once a week, they will come back. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you this story. And I have been encouraged. Thank you guys for all of the emails telling me stop rushing through my stories. You said you want to learn from my life lessons. I used to do this young lady's hair. Y'all know I have a background in cosmetology. And I did her hair maybe about three or four years. Hold your questions and I'm going to get them. And she lost her job because she hurt. She was in a car accident and she hurt her back in the accident. She worked for the post office. She was uh, off from work like three or four months. And the doctor said she can go back to work for light duty. And I used to do her hair once a week. Well... She went back to the post office. The supervisor didn't like her. And she was working in the sorting area. And she told her she could only work part-time according to her, what do you call it, doctor's release to go back to work. So she tried to make her work eight hours when she was only supposed to work four or five. So she walked off the job and they fired her. Now, if you know anything about the post office, you know they have a really good, strong union. And I knew this young lady was ill and I knew that she had a good case and she was going to get her job back so the two or three months that she was off from work and the union was fighting for her job 
to get her job back, I continued to do her hair free. I just told her, give me a love offering when you return to work. So she went back to work. She was well and everything because she got the job back through the union. She never did come back to see me. And so I saw her sister in the mall. And I said, hey, how your sister doing? She says, you know, she got a job back. I said, yeah, I know, but I haven't seen her do her hair. And she said, uh, well, she's getting her hair done. So all the stylists that worked in my salon, they were really ticked off. They said, now you took care of her, did her hair for her free. You would think she would come back and patronize you, especially since you were so good to her. So when you go through something like that, that'll make you not want to help people. You understand what I'm saying? But I know where my help comes from. All my help comes from the Lord. So whatever I sow, I reap. So I didn't stop helping other people when they got laid off from work or uh, got in trouble. Like in 2008 when the, the we had this financial crisis for the, you know, the recession, I didn't stop helping people. Because my help doesn't come from individuals. So, I said all of this to say this. If you email me a question and I have the answer for you, I will respond. If I don't know the answer, I'll refer you where you can get the answer. You don't have to send me anything through my PayPal account. You don't have to send me anything through my cash app or um, through this, what you call them, super chats. I'm still going to help who I can because I know I'm going to get it back up here. I hope you all follow me. Okay. I think I saw a super chat from somebody, whoever it was. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you so much. Okay. Yes, Tommy. Yes. You give from the heart not to receive anything back. I don't want to be so preachy, but I can't help it. Because my life is a living testimony. The type of cancer that I had, breast cancer, I was supposed to be dead. Do you understand? It was a very aggressive type that would have metastasized. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. So my life is spared for a reason. It's, I'm still here for a reason. Okay? All right. Okay. Here we go. Is a five-gallon bucket the norm for planting veggies? Yes. You can plant anything in a five-gallon bucket. Mm-hmm. If you're going to plant um, tomatoes, put one in a five-gallon bucket. Unless you're doing, you you planting those little micro plants like Tiny Tim or Red Robin, you could put two or three of them in a five-gallon bucket. You only want to put one pepper plant in a five-gallon bucket. You can put two cabbages. You could put, you know, a nice amount of kale. But you, you need to do your research on that so that you will know what to put in those five-gallon buckets. Okay. Somebody said they have some nectarine seeds. How can I start those? Uh, Lori Hunt Saker. I don't recommend growing a nectarine tree by, from seed. It's going to take you about eight years to get uh, a harvest, and you don't know if it's going to be true to whatever the seed came out of. Most fruit trees are grafted onto rootstock. So I don't recommend growing a nectarine tree. There are several trees that you can grow like the sour stops I mentioned in my last video, papayas. Anybody know any other ones? You can jump in here and put it put it down. But there's just a, a, a moringa. You can grow them if you just want to grow them for fun. But if you're expecting to get some fruit in a couple of years, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm in zone 8A, Miss Tommy. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to freeze. Tommy, you'll be okay. As long as it doesn't get past 32. Or if you're growing tropicals, 
like uh, my sour sops can't take 40 degrees or less. They will die. They just won't shed the leaves. They will die. So unless you're growing something like that, don't worry about it. Thank you, Miss Betty Jones. Don't worry about it. You, your trees are not going to die. Your plants are not going to die. I doubt the South Carolina gets below 32 degrees this time of year. So if it gets down to 50 or even 40, don't worry about it. Don't worry about something like that is when you're growing something that is tropical, like I said, my soursop trees. Okay? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't care if I don't ever get no fruit off of those soursop trees. I'm growing them for the leaves. Because the leaves, you make tea, they have antioxidants in them that eat the free radicals in your bloodstream, which forms cancer. So I'm just keeping them alive for the leaves so I can make tea. But if I'm blessed to get some fruit, that could be a good thing too. Okay, here we go. Experimental. That's why sometimes I'm afraid to talk on lies. Never be afraid, Miss Sims. No. We're a community. We're a family. We are all here to help each other. And if I said something that, knowing that it came from love, a pure place, no. Don't ever be afraid to ask anything. That's why I'm here. And nobody is looking at you. Nobody knows you unless you know, you invited somebody to this chat. So in other words, don't even worry about what people really think. You're here to get some information. Okay? Green organic love. Somebody must have passed away. The Miss Lady for real, if you've had a death in a family or a close friend, I'm very sorry. I've been through some things. I've lost a lot of people. So I I, he, I see that you're telling somebody that he is no longer suffering and he is in a good place. And he fought hard. Okay. Okay. It's surely in Richmond, Virginia. You know, we went from 100 degrees to 93 degrees, degrees in a couple of days. So we got like a little cool front. And I'm originally from Indiana, so I talk to my folks every day. And they said in Indiana, it dropped down to 60 degrees. So it's it's so something going on in the in the environment all over the country. Okay, so the new city gardener wants to know that I grow my sour sops from seeds. Yes. Yes, I bought the seeds off eBay. And um, they're three years old. Should I worry about fruit flies in container soil? Betty, next time, put your question in all caps. I just happened to see this one because it was next to the last question. Fruit flies in container soil. Spray my bug spray. That'll get rid of them. But I don't think they can hurt your plants because I've had maggots before in my compost and it helps break down the matter. Okay. I've tried growing buttercrunch lettuce twice and they just won't sprout. Is there a way to know if you have been so bad at seeds? Take your seeds, put them in paper towel like this with the paper towel, I mean the seeds with water Put them into a baggie and zip them up and put them in a dark place. Go back about three, four days, open it up and look. And if they have little sprouts on them, you know you got good seeds. Another way, you, what you can do is you can take seeds and put them in a clear glass. That I said clear so you can see it. Put the seeds in. If they float, they're bad seeds. If they go down to the bottom, they're good seeds. eBay, but buy a little no go to a reputable company. Even those cheap little stores like... um. Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, Dollar General, they have um, American seeds, and they, they germinate really well for me. I have had some that's almost 10 years old that I put in my freezer. I don't have any problems out of them. Um, but my favorite 
supplier of seeds is Baker Creek and Botanical Interest, and I ordered them online. Now I can get a uh, I can get a lot of Botanical Interest seeds from my local upscale nursery in my area, but I love Baker Creek. But I do buy some rare seeds uh, occasionally from eBay. What kind of trees are you growing for the leaves? Right now, the only one that I'm growing for the leaves is soursop. And I'm growing Texas Star Hibiscus. It's considered a bush, but mine right now are about 11, inch, 11 feet tall. And I grow them for the flowers. Hibiscus flowers, if you steep them into a tea, will lower your blood pressure. So right now I'm in my I'm, I'm at the phase in my life where I'm only growing what I like to eat that is healthy or something for medicinal purposes. Experimental gardener, it was someone else's live feed. Mm. I missed something. I think somebody is saying I didn't answer the question. And somebody is defending me and saying you were in somebody else's live feed because Miss C answers the questions. Yes, I really do. If I don't know the answer, I will direct you to where you can get it. What are the best tomato varieties to grow in Zone 8A? Black Betty Boop? Okay, now... That's a question that I can give you a good answer for because I'm in the same growth zone that you're in. For the heat, I know some of you may not like this, but I grow Early Girl and Celebrity because those are hybrids that have been uh, engineered to be heat tolerant and blight tolerant. So I like to grow those. But I also like to grow Roma tomatoes for pasta sauce. I like to grow mortgage lifters because they're real big and meaty. And in the fall, I like to grow the green heirloom uh, tomato varieties like uh, emerald green, giant green tomato, and the white tomato, which is green. For example, this is an emerald green. You know it's ripe because it has a little yellow cast, and you can feel it. It's soft. This is ready to eat on the salad. But also, I wanted a big slicing tomato that is green. I don't like the way that one looks at the bottom because I was growing that probably when it was cold, then warm, then cold, and then warm. But it's still a good tasting tomato. But this is a celebrity. It's going to be like your little average tomato that you get in the grocery store. Here's another one. I think this is an early girl. Yeah, because this has more indentations around here. But these are some nice tomatoes. And the bigger ones, you know, make some really nice green tomatoes. Now, since we're on the subject, I want to share with you that this is how I like. Can you see that? When it has a little blush to it, you can see this one better. This is how I like my green tomatoes from red tomatoes. I like it when it's just a little bit of blush to it, but it's still firm and it slices really, really well. I really don't particularly like a green, green tomato for um, fried green tomatoes. I like them with just a little bit. It has a little sweetness to it. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, tomatoes can be harvested when they are green. It's one of the rare or few fruits that will continue to get sweeter after it is harvested. So if you have a problem like rats or rodents or squirrels or whatever, uh, eating your, your uh, tomatoes, harvest them early. I didn't lose not one tomato this, this year because I cut my losses. Once I saw I had a whole lot of root rot because we had uh, rain continuously for three and a half weeks with no stop, flash floods, and my tomatoes started getting yellow at the bottom and the plants were just drooping over. I cut my losses, loss and I harvested a whole lot of tomatoes early. Hi, Chef, Rob, Chef Dagger, thank you for coming. So, let me get the next question.
What works for ants? Any that remain alive? Okay, you answered the question. If you put your question in all caps, I can get them. And I appreciate my moderators jumping in and helping me out and answering. Uh, I appreciate your, your help. That's why you were selected. New Jack City, New, uh, New Jack City, New, New City Gardener. Thinking about that movie with uh, Wesley Snipes. Lowe's have their hibiscus bushes on sale. Okay, great. I don't know about you all, but it's really hard for me to go out. Um, I'm still laughing inside about New Jack City. Uh, but uh, I was just doing picking up groceries from curbside delivery and picking up my orders from uh, Home Depot or whatever. And bring, they bring you to the car. Or I was having express delivery to the house. And I went out last week. And I mean, it's just, it's weird out there, guys. Just be very careful. The tension is real high. The racial climate in this country is really bad right now. And people are snapping and cursing at people. And it's, be careful, okay? So I don't want to go shopping right now. I'm just going to take it easy. Okay. Somebody said they bought some blueberry bushes. I don't have any blueberry bushes growing right now. I had an issue with a landscaper that accidentally covered my blueberry bushes up. Um, I don't want to talk about it because it gets me upset. But so I'm not growing any right now. Thank you, Experimental Gardener. She says she loves the channel and she looks forward to the old uploads. I'm going to upload one tomorrow morning. If not tomorrow morning, it'll be the next day about... Um, rodents on my um attacking one of my uh fruit trees i'm not going to talk about it right now because you won't even look forward to the video but if you're having that issue watch that video i'll either drop it in the morning or in the next day boiling water works for ants any that remain alive thank you miss grando Hi, Lady Cheryl. I did email you my pictures, but I think you didn't get it. No, because, Brenda, I um, I remember your question through my comment, but I haven't received any uh, pictures from you yet. Green Organic Love, can you put the email address up, please? Or Miss Grando? Or Bear Fruit Gardening? No, I don't have any raspberries either. The reason why I don't have any raspberries is because I don't like them. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't enjoy them. I will eat a few, but I won't eat any raspberry jelly. I won't eat a raspberry pie. I won't eat a raspberry soda. I don't like that. Now, I eat fresh cherries, and I love fresh cherries, but I don't eat anything cherry-flavored. No, you know, jam, jelly, cheesecake, I don't like it. So I'm at the point in my life where I grow what I like. Okay. Uh, True Ari Organic Farms, LLC. Thank you for coming in this evening. We appreciate you being here. Your lawn care mowed down all your bean bushes. Man, bean, girl, girl, I know. These guys came with the uh, landscaper to spread wood chips and they spread wood chips on top of my asparagus and my, it hurts to talk about it, and my uh, blueberries. Uh-huh. Are ants harmful to plants? Okay, let me break this down to you. Thank you, Green Organic Love, for putting that uh, email address up. So I think her name was uh, Brenda. Was it Brenda? Allen? Make sure you got the right email address because I responded to about five or six emails today. You said you pointed out to them three times and they did it. And the bad thing about it, Bear Fruit Gardening, they don't want you standing around and watching them. So, you know, it's awful. So, wait a minute. Well, I was going to answer something. I was going to answer something. I lost my train of thoughts. 
That's why I grow what I grow. Those attacking my peach trees is what I yelled at about on A and A. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who A and A is. Okay, not to be rude, I just don't understand. Is it okay to store open packs of seeds in the fridge? Yes, if you put them in a plastic bag. If you put all your open seeds, you know, fold them down and put them in a baggie. I'll put them in two big baggies, big gallon size. I double bag it. But I don't put mine in the refrigerator. I put mine in the freezer. What's up with these landscaping crews? So many people on YouTube complaining about them. I'm telling you. Guys, let me tell you. I don't let them in my backyard either. I got two locks on my privacy fence from the front and the side and driveway. They can't even come in my backyard. I only have them to do my front yard, my side yard that's outside of the fence. And then they have to walk around to the neighbor's yard that doesn't have a fence and edge up a right back where the alley is. Because they were just destroying things. So I don't have any lawn in my backyard now. I have wood chips and the people were eating my fruit and you guys know if you have five apples on your tree and the lawn people come and there's only two left in the daytime the squirrels didn't get them the landscapers got them <laughs> so my phone is in the wrong position so I don't let them in my backyard anymore that's why I got wood chips right now that still need to be shoveled because I'm just taking my time doing a little bit at a time because I'm not letting them in my backyard. And you're right, Bear Fruit Gardener. It is hurt. It hurts to talk about it. I don't want to talk about my... I got videos. If you go back and you look at my fruit videos, you'll see my grandbabies eating the... Can't talk about it. They were eating the berries and now they're gone. Okay, what's up with these landscapers? What variety? I had a question. I missed it. They were eating. Yeah, eating my food. I just missed the question, though. Let me try to find it. Miss Cheryl, so something is dibbling on my plum leaves. And I see worm webs. Will neem oil take care of this problem? You can just you can just blast worm webs off. And what I do is I just go ahead on and take that leaf off. Okay, just take the leaf. Off. I'm sorry, guys. This phone is acting crazy. I'm gonna put a tomato in front of it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Let me see. Yeah, I just pluck those leaves off. And then you can take a, um, you can take um, neem or whatever, but just, uh, there's a leaf and there's a worm and there's a well that's enclosing it like a cocoon. I would just take that bad boy off. I wouldn't even try to save it, the leaf. It'll cause more harm uh, later move over here i'm propping this up with tomatoes guys because my new phone is coming <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> okay okay you need a shotgun you must be talking about squirrels yes i was considering getting a weed whacker and doing that myself bear fruit gardener i bought a weed whacker that is supposed to be a mini lawnmower. It's been in my trunk since January. <laughs> my son-in-law put it together and I put it in my trunk of my car and it's cordless. It came with two battery packs. I've never used it, so don't waste your money. But you're young, sweetie. You may, you may go ahead on and do it. That's what they did to me. Miracle, Living Miracle Homestead, they messed with your fruit. And Mendisa said she hugged somebody and said it was okay, but she was angry. No, I can't do it. I'll walk away and pray, but I'm not going to. 
hug him and tell him it's okay. Okay, Mrs. Marvelous asking somebody else a question. Oh, that was the question about the ants. Miss Grando, thank you. The ants will farm aphids. Aphids excretes a sticky honeydew sweet solution. So the, the ants will surround them to uh, keep you from killing them because they like what they provide. So get rid of the aphids, you'll get rid of the ants. Okay? And the aphids, you need to get rid of them because they suck the juice, the life out of your leaves. And they will ruin a plant by sucking it from the outside in. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, Ty Lily said, Miss Cheryl, I need you, Ty Lily, to put it in all caps. But you don't have to do it now, just the next time. So something is nibbling on my plum leaves. I see a worm web. Oh, we, we already answered that. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else that like to get on plum tree leaves and peach tree leaves and all citrus tree leaves, grasshoppers. They love to eat the leaves. But I just let them go ahead and eat some of the leaves on my citrus trees, not my sour sops up under my patio, under the gazebo. But I don't care about them eating the leaves of the citrus trees, the two improved Meyer lemons and the two Mexican key limes because they don't mess with my fruit. And if you lose some of the leaves on those two citrus trees that I just named, it won't harm your fruit. Somebody said they have all of their landscaping equipment. Okay. Okay, I'm going on to Ms. B. Washington. I had some purple collars. Ms. B. Washington, all caps, if you're making a comment or a question. I had some purple collar greens. The gardeners took all... Oh, the stock out of the ground. I want to reroute them, but I never found one root in the garbage can. Neighbors are stealing your mangoes, Miss Living Miracle Homestead. Oh, man. All you have to do is ask. Okay, so we have London Worms and Garden. Hello, all the way from London, the UK. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending this live. Should I wait to order my, look like a pear tree. Chef Raw Digger, where, I always call you Raw Digger, I'm sorry. Chef Daga Rastafari, where are you? And where are you ordering from? Because if you live in zone eight or above, it's too late, in my opinion. You should wait to the late fall, early winter. My baby okra died. 90 degree weather killed. No, okra can stand the heat. You overwatered it or didn't water it enough, dear. I'm sorry. Okra can stand the heat. I can grow okra all summer long in 108 degree temperature. Okay. I'll answer Chef Dagger's question. The next one is, have you ever grown a harvest without fertilizing? Just sun, ground soil, and water. Yes, ma'am. To give you a perfect example, okra will grow in anything. Any type of soil. Comfrey will grow anything. When you start talking about uh, fruiting things like peppers and tomatoes, you're going to need some soil amendments. Yes, ma'am, you can grow in just dirt and soil. Dirt, water, soil, whatever. My baby okra died. Nine degrees weather killed them. No, ma'am. Miss Charlene is not trying to embarrass you. Nine degree weather did not kill your okra. Something else did. Maybe you had garden soil or in-ground soil that was, or I don't know if you had them in a pot. Did you have them in the ground? But okra thrives. I just made a video on five top plants that thrive in heat. And for the benefit of the new gardeners, I'm going to repeat them. Okra, eggplant, sweet potatoes, peppers, corn and squash. Okay. 
Yes, I grow mint and marigolds. Thank you, Miss Grandy. Will an indeterminate tomato grow in a fire? Yes. Yes, perfect. All of the tomatoes uh, that I showed you, these were all indeterminate, meaning that they don't all uh, flower and grow at the same time. And once they produce, the plant dry, dies off. That's a determinant. Interdeterminate means that it'll grow as long as the conditions are favorable. So as long as you got 85 degree weather, between 65, 85 degree weather, that plant can grow 10, 20 feet tall. That's honest God true. But not here in Texas. It's too hot. Somebody said they had them in a milk jug. I think that Charlene, that was your okra? The jug was probably too little, sweetie. You need a five-gallon bucket. No more than two plants in a five-gallon bucket of okra. Unless you want to experiment. Do you bring your sour sour plants in during the winter? Yes, New City Gardener. Yes. I tried keeping them in the greenhouse because I have a heated greenhouse. But the humidity is too high. Sour sops do not... I'm talking too loud. I'm sorry. Sour sops do not like high humidity. So I bring them in the house. From here on out, they are going under the gazebo. And then they're going by my back patio doors during the winter. Okay. I was thinking about ordering a giant Asian pear tree. Will they grow in Florida? Yes, sir. No concerns that I know of. Check uh, Ison's Nursery or Stark Brothers. I'm growing several of them. Yes, Chef. If I were you, I would wait. And you are, I forgot where you were. You're in Florida. Hmm. You all don't, depends on where you are, you don't get as hot as we do in Texas. You check. Check, check with uh, check with Stark Brothers. You put your zone in, and they'll tell you the best time of year to send that tree to you. They are, man, they are on it. Plus, Chef, they give you a year guarantee. No questions asked. I sense the same way. Yes, bear fruit gardener. Okra roots are huge. They, they they like little trees when you, not little, big trees when you pull them up. So growing them in a milk carton will not work. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, uh, Bear Fruit. Got my Neptunes in, Miss Cheryl. All right. You're going to love it, Turf Therapy. It's going to make all your peppers flower. It, you see, you're going to see a big difference. I ordered two Russian comfrey plants from eBay. The plants arrived with yellow leaves. They look dead. Is there any way to save them? Did you get Russian blocking 14? Because if you did, you don't care. You don't have to worry about dead leaves. As long as that root is alive, don't worry about the, the leaves. Just plant it. Stick it in some dirt, any kind of dirt. It'll work. You, that's one of the plants. Somebody asked a question about things that will grow if you just stick it in the dirt. Yes, it will, even in poor soil. Okay, I love it when you talk loud. <laughs> I'm 56 years old, housewife with poor hearing. I don't hear well in this ear, and I don't want to hear it, wear a hearing aid. And so I forget that I'm talking loud. <laughs> Thank you, Experimental Gardener. Living Miracle Homestead. I grow them in Florida. Okay. Oh, great. Living Miracle Homestead. She letting you know that she grow those Asian trees. Asian pear trees. Okay. Somebody answered a question there. Turf therapy. I planted broccoli and cauliflower in April. They grew tall, but with no veggies. It got too hot. Where do you live, Miller's Garden? It's a little too hot for broccoli and cauliflower. Brassicas. April. This is May, June. Yeah, you should have harvested something, though. 
You welcome, Charlene. You need to send me an email and a picture, sweetie, because uh, I don't know why you didn't get anything unless you just over fertilize it with too much nitrogen. Okay, I purchased a peach tree from Star Brothers. They will ship it in December because of my zone. See? 7A and 8A Alabama. That's right. Inger Norman. Star Brothers is the is the bomb. They'll tell you. They'll tell you when it's the best time for you to get that tree. Because if I order from Star Brothers right now, well, they're not going to send it to me. But I'm just saying, every now and then they'll have trees on sale. And I'm going to share this with you. Stock Brothers has some trees on sale, and some they sent it to me anyway, and they died, and they replaced all three of them. And they were like $9.99 trees, and when they replaced them, they replaced them in the fall and in the winter, and they, they were big trees, big girth in the uh, trunk. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jeannie's Farmhouse. Have you ever heard of okra plants dying back over the winter and coming back in the spring? Never. Angela Franklin, never. Unless you live in a climate that's super, super. Okay, that was my greenhouse alarm. Okay. Chef Daga. I wanted to find a dwarf variety of pear trees. Stock Brothers don't ship to Florida. I don't know why. Mm. I know there are some state regulations about certain trees going into Florida, but I thought it was citrus trees. I don't know about that, sweetie. I don't know, but I know that they have it going on, and they're going to follow all the rules of transporting trees. Thank you, Liberal Living Miracle Homestead. I appreciate you coming in. Have a nice evening. Somebody said they purchased two cherry trees from Lowe's, no leaves. Wow. I wouldn't have bought them this time of year. Miller's Gardener, I wouldn't have bought no two cherry trees this time of year with no leaves. They might be dead. You might want to scrape back the uh, bark on the tree and see if you see any green in that cambium layer. All trees should be coming out of dormancy in June, anywhere. Okay? So, take your receipt and take them back. No worries, Missy. If you feel like talking loud, I'm listening. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, now we're in the part of the chat that I would like for you to put in, type in yes if you have a channel. Just yes if you have a channel. Fried green tomatoes tonight. I bought started plants last year and they all died. I reused the soil and six of them came up strong and I have been harvesting okra since late April. Where do you live, Angela? You, they died, and they probably had some seeds in the soil that came back. But I assure you, the plants didn't come back. Okay, so now we're getting all these channels. Green Organic Love. I didn't know S uh, Rob was in here. All these answers, guys. If you're new to gardening, all of these people have channels. Check them out. Learn from as many people as you can. Thank you all so much for putting this information. Hey, Patricia, I didn't know you were here, or if I did, I forgot. And Cassandra Daniel says she posts a weekly small backyard gardening tour. Somebody else uh, uh, posts canning videos. Okay, you all getting ahead of me. <laughs> Now, if you're in zone eight or um, 
Zone 8, would you put your... I tell you what, everybody just put their zone that they're in now. Y'all getting ahead of me. Y'all getting too fast, as my mama used to say. <laughs> yeah, I can fast. <laughs> because it's good to... to um, Know who growing in the same weather conditions as you're growing. Hypercentric, where are you in? You must be around Houston to be in 9A. I'm not sure what zone I'm in, but I'm near Dallas. You're in 8A, sweetie. Extraordinaire. 8A is Dallas. Write it down. Hypercentric is in Richmond. You all can always go to the Farmer's Almanac online and put in the search bar um, Garden Zone, and it'll tell you. Okay, I think everybody has put in where they are gardening. If there aren't any other questions, then I won't hold you long. Are there any other questions? Don't forget, extra Extraordinary, you are in Zone 8A. I'm going back through the news feed just to see what I missed. Tonight was really good because I was, can you say yes in your gardening zone? Oh, you the one wanted to be that started all this. <laughs> That's good. Okay, let me go down to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to say good night to everybody. I hope I've answered all of your questions. Yes, can you can bell peppers? Yes, I have two videos on canning bell peppers and eggplants. They're very similar. All right. Heal the world. Make this a better place. For you and for me and the entire human race, there are people dying. But if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. All right. Good night, everybody. Remember that God loves you and I love you, too. And don't forget, next week I'll be camping, so I won't be here, but I'll be back the following week. In the meantime, send me an email. Good night, everybody.